Last week, I uploaded a video which people seem to really like, where I analyze the voiceover read on the Wells Fargo apology spot. I'll put the link to the video below. But if we're just meeting for the first time, my name is Chris Agos. I'm an actor and voice talent, and even though I've been doing this a really long time, I still try to get better. And one of the ways I do that is by paying attention to the reads that talent buyers are putting into their spots. Those reads are working for clients, and as voice talent, our job is to give our clients reads that they can use. So I thought I would come into the booth and this time analyze the voiceover read on the latest Drive Time commercial. I thought I'd tell you what I really like and find interesting about it so that maybe you can learn something from it too. Bonus, the voice talent is one of my favorite talents ever. Stick around. If you find this video interesting and helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe because I'll be doing more videos like this in the future and I don't want you to miss out. And I also want to hear what you guys think of the read in this spot, so tell me below. Okay, so I have to admit that before seeing this spot, I didn't know who drivetime.com was. I had never heard of them. But when I heard the spot, I knew instantly who the voice talent was. His name is Will Lyman, and he is a total pro that I've been a fan of since... I don't know, since I was like a kid. He's probably best known as the narrator for the TV show Frontline, which is on PBS, and it's a journalistic show. It covers some really heavy topics, and as such, it needs a really serious narrator. And Will pulls this off like nobody else can. But he also works commercially, and this spot is a great example of his range because this commercial is most definitely not serious. Now, unlike the Wells Fargo spot, which is a 60, this one's a 30, so there's not quite as much material to get through, but there's still plenty to talk about. So let's go ahead and roll the first couple of lines and see what Will sounds like. This is Dr. Gunter Zuloff. Did he solve Carmichael's totient conjecture? Yes. Yes, he did. Okay, so first off, I got to say that I think the casting in this spot is absolutely spot on. We've got a main character who's a little older, obviously very intelligent, and that lines up perfectly with what Will brings to the table. Will is, I think, close to 70 years old, but he also has this very intelligent quality that he brings to his voice. It just is naturally there. So it really matches up well with the concept and the visuals that we get in the spot. But Will doesn't jump right into the read right away. He gives a little pause after the first word. Listen. This is Dr. Gunter Zuloff. That pause helps to build some anticipation for what's coming next. It would have been really easy for Will to just blow right through that and just simply introduce the guy. This is Dr. Gunter Zuloff. And who knows, maybe he actually did a take that way, but the creatives chose the one with the pause because they know that we can use pauses to build anticipation when the copy otherwise wouldn't allow for it. If you just look at the words on the page, there's very little anticipation in an introduction. But by throwing the pause in there, the listener is kind of like, Hmm, what's going on here? Let's hear it again and we'll go further into the read this time. This is Dr. Gunter Zuloff. Did he solve Carmichael's totient conjecture? Yes. Yes, he did. Now, the tone that Will sets in the first couple of sentences is funny, but it's not like rolling on the floor funny. It's not LOL. He accomplishes this in a couple different ways. First, he's using his upper registers. Now, Will has a really deep resonant voice, and that's the voice that he relies upon when he's narrating Frontline. It's a heavy show. It requires a read with some gravitas, and the lower register brings that kind of weight to the read. But that won't work here because this is a goofy little story that's being told. So he's up here in his higher register, and it's almost light and airy, as light and airy as Will Lyman gets. In fact, when I hear him, I almost picture him seated in a luxurious chair with his eyebrows raised, a tumbler of good cognac in one hand, and he's gesturing toward the good doctor with his other hand. Maybe there's an exotic bird perched behind him. He has a very upper crust quality to his voice already, and that very light, airy, upper register read really adds to that. So that's one thing that makes it funny. But the other thing is how he treats the question and the answer. He doesn't use a single downward inflection. Everything ends up. It totally leaves us hanging. In our daily lives, when we're in conversation with other people and we ask them a question, we generally end that sentence upward. Did you get my message? 
And the reason we're doing that is because it tells the listener that we anticipate more information. We need a reply from them. Same thing with ad copy. Will easily could have used downward inflections here, and that would have been fine. But by using those upward inflections, that tells us that there's more to the story. And they also add to that general persona that he's trying to build, this sort of eccentric, upper-crust character he's got going on. But did he buy his car at drive time using the industry's smartest online tools? Then he does finally use a downward inflection, but he saves it for a genius moment. It's a moment that tells the listener that out of all this other stuff, all of these upward inflections, all of this anticipation, the thing to remember, the thing that's important and permanent is the client's name. It's almost as if he took the client's name and he pulled it out of the sentence, made it its own two-word sentence, and then put it back in and continued with the rest of the thought. But did he buy his car at drive time using the industry's smartest online tools? You can hear voiceover pros do this from time to time because it's a really great way to make the client's name stand out, and clients love that. Onward. But did he buy his car at drive time using the industry's smartest online tools? No. No, he did not. And he continues with the upward inflections even the first time he answers the question, no. He could have easily gone, no. But he goes, no. And leaves us hanging, leaves us wanting more. That first no has no finality to it at all. And it gives us the impression, it gives me the impression anyway, that he's making a judgment call about the good doctor. And I can almost see him seated in his chair with his bird and his cognac. And he's very slowly shaking his head, looking at the doctor and maybe wagging his finger and almost tisking at him like. And he finally brings a downward inflection with the second no, because at some point he does need to end the story. But the copy goes on. Dr. Gunter Zuloff was almost a genius. This spot follows a classic problem-solution format, where a problem is presented in the first part of the spot, and it's resolved, the solution is presented in the second part. The problem is summed up very nicely here, and that is that even very smart people can make bad decisions if they don't have the right information. Will could have used those upward inflections here too, except the copy doesn't really allow for it. Not only the copy, but the story doesn't. The story's kind of over at this point. This is just a summarization of the problem, not a continuation of the problem. And it's also excellent direction for him to hit almost in this statement. Dr. Gunter Zuloff was almost a genius. Because obviously anybody who can solve this big complicated math problem is brilliant, but genius, that's a whole nother level. And this guy isn't that. 21 seconds in, we finally get to the solution and the read is dramatically different from the first part of the spot. Listen. Intelligent online financing and live market-based pricing on over 15,000 vehicles. Drivetime.com, the genius way to buy a car. From 21 to 26, Will Lyman does not take a breath. His energy really picks up here. He is out of storytelling mode, and he is much more interested in knowing that we understand what he is talking about. He ups his projection, he ups his speed, he puts down his cognac, the bird flies away, and he is leaning forward a little bit in his chair. That finger, which was waving before, is now pointed at us, and he's saying, remember this. He's not overly impressed by the facts that he's giving us. He's not trying to sell us anything. He is the same guy, but now he's talking about the moral of the story, and he wants us to remember that more than the story itself. He motors through this section. <laughs> Motor, no pun intended. And that could be because they were running short on time, but it also translates into urgency. Speed equals urgency. And it also provides a really nice contrast to the previous part of the spot, where everything was much slower and laid back. Anytime we can bring some contrast to our read, we should do that as voice talent. In the end, this spot is awesome, and that's why it's gotten over 20 million views in the two months since they've posted it on YouTube. Will Lyman, everyone. In my book, he is the genius in this spot. We'll see you next time.